Well, hello, the Vlad here. Welcome to my studio. Today, I want to talk about something that I think should be on most kind of budget-friendly base lists, but I'm not saying it as much. And we're obviously talking about the Sterling by Music Man Stingray 4. I should also mention that I have bought this base with my own money and nobody asked me to do a video about it. So yeah, just doing this by my own because I think this is one of the best budget bases that you can get. And let's get started right away. First of all, the body is made out of bass wood and the particular finish you're looking at is the vintage sunburst one. But you can actually get this in a lot of different finishes, which is really nice. It has this a bit maybe vintage looking bridge that gives you a lot of adjustment options both intonation wise and string height wise as well. The scale length on this base is 34 inches, the neck radius 9.5. It has a nice satin finish on the back of the neck, though it started to become a bit more glossy because I've been actually playing this base quite a lot. The neck itself is made out of maple, but depending on what finish option you go with, you will either have a maple or a jatoba fretboard. I really like both the looks and the feel of the open gate tuners this comes with. There's a single ceramic humbucker and this bass also has a two-band active preamp, so basically volume, then there's treble and bass controls. The bass I have doesn't feel super heavy, but it isn't super light either, somewhere in between. But with budget-friendly instruments like this, the weight might vary quite a bit, so you have been warned. Alright, let's first check out how the active preamp works here. So, right now I have volume on full and both of these treble and bass knobs have this kind of nice notch so you know when it's flat and they are set on a flat right now. So, here's how it sounds. Nothing turned on on the Valentine Depth, so just the DEI sound. Then we're gonna boost the treble. And fully back. And back to flat. And then bass on full. All the way down. As you can tell, the active EQ is very powerful, but for the rest of the demo, I'm just going to set it on flat. One of the reasons I ended up buying this bass was because I really liked how it sounds both played with the fingers and it feels comfortable for me to play with fingers as I can also anchor the, my thumb on the bridge humbucker. But I also like how it works with the pick feel. This bridge works really well with my kind of picking style. Something that I also really like about this bass is the bridge humbucker. It's thick, round, but there's this kind of clang to it. I don't know if it's the bridge or something else. To me, it kind of reminds me of all the Blink-182 bass sounds I grew up listening to. And on the Valentine, I'm using the boost and the bass amp again and sounds like this. And when you play with fingers, I need to practice playing with fingers more, but you get the idea. Roughly two years later, I'm still really happy with the purchase. The best way to describe this bass is that it gets the job done. 
To me it also looks good, which is always a bonus. The bass stays in tune really well, I've played it live several times as well and just stays in tune and gets the job done as I already mentioned. To me it sounds good, though some people say that the bridge humbucker is the first one to go if they would do any upgrades and the preamp as well. So far I've been really happy with both, but maybe it's something I should consider later, what do you think? Weirdly enough, the fret sprout that initially was on this bass has actually gotten better over time. It's gone through two Finnish wind tests, which contains a lot of humidity and temperature changes, pretty drastic ones as well, and the fret sprout has gotten better actually. I do think I should take it to a luthier at some point though, just to round up the fret ends a little bit and maybe level them as well. But it actually intonates pretty well and again, I haven't had to think about it, which I love. I also like that it's not too cheap where you're basically buying like a mod platform where you have to swap everything. Some people love to do that and thumbs up for you. But I want to get something that gets the job done and I can upgrade something if I want to later, but I don't have to do it right away. And two years later, I haven't upgraded a single thing on this yet. And also when going to band rehearsals and things like that, I like the fact that it's good enough, but it's not expensive in case something would happen, somebody would drop it or anything like that. So to me, it's a great balance between affordable yet well made. Also, I should mention that I do have a soft spot for the neck shapes that Sterlings and Musicmans have. I don't know, there's just something that fits my palm. And I want to come back to something that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. I think this bass should be added to the list of Fenders or Squires, Tokais, Harley Benders and such as one of the budget-friendly bases to get because the build quality is good, the price is very affordable, it has a unique sound, unique look, a neck profile that should suit most guitar players for example, and it just sounds good, plays well and based on my unbiased test here, it actually holds up even in Finnish weather. So yeah, well done Sterling, I've been really happy with this base and if you want to get yours, you can follow the affiliate link in the description Using those won't cost you anything extra, but helps to put food on my family's table. Thanks. And there you go, that's my review of the Sterling Stingray for... Got any questions, be sure to ask those in the comment section down below. And there's a bunch of stuff on the screen that you can click and good things will happen. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell as well. Thank you so much for watching, I shall see you next time!